Something came from Baltimore, from Baltimore, from Baltimore. Something came from Baltimore, from Baltimore, from Baltimore. Welcome to another episode of Something Came From Baltimore. I'm your host, Tom Galker, and tonight on the phone, we have the rope dope Records recording artist from Vancouver called The Five Alarm Funk. This eight-man funk band just released a new album called Big Smoke. Teo Branston is the drummer and the band leader of Five Alarm Funk, and we're going to chat with Teo Branston in a minute. But first, let's listen to a sample of one of their songs from Big Smoke. The song is called Thumper. Teo Branston, welcome to Something Came From Baltimore. Thomas, finally. Yeah. <laughs> yes, my man. I'm sorry I missed you the other day. This we were whole... throwing a big old birth we were playing a big big old birthday party. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's well, been a crazy time for like everybody, man. I guess you have it set up where the album comes out early summer, and then you can tour all summer long off the album. Without those eyes, it's kind of hard for them to know that you got an album out there. We've done. A, I think we've done a really good job of promoting the record, getting the record out there. Like we've got, you know, a record number of new Spotify listeners and stuff like that. But uh, you know, the way it makes the band makes his money is off touring. Like, that's how we actually make dough, you know? Uh, but so, so to not be able to tour the record is definitely, like, it's, it's a very weird time. It, it feels like uh, there should be tons of success and momentum going on. And the release was great. Uh, and we're working with rope dope Sir, who, who uh, you know, was helping us promote the record and, and putting out internationally and everything. So it still feels really good. But to not be able to tour the record is, is definitely... Um, yeah, it's a weird thing for the band to have to go through. You know, there's all this excitement, but we don't get to personally feel like see that excitement firsthand, you know? Sure. Yeah, definitely. And uh, when you play, are you, are you festival oriented? Are you like in festivals? Are you in jazz? Like you're, this album crosses over a couple of genres. It's funky and it's, it can be considered even jazz. Are you doing jazz festivals? Are you doing like kind of, like just regular uh, rock festivals or are you by yourself? Uh, no, no. We, we, we played like tons of jazz festivals, tons of world festivals, uh, folk festivals. Uh, we are definitely like a festival oriented band. I mean, we run off festivals and, and then we run clubs in between festivals. So, so big, you know, music venues kind of thing. Um, and, and that's where we've always been, you know, and I think that's where, five alarm really lives is at music festivals that you know we're, we're in a, a, a super fun band super exciting band to watch visually and uh and you know our music does cross those borders so we we can fit into world music festivals we do fit into jazz festivals we fit into folk festivals uh it, it must be a drag you got this great album and it's ready to, to run through it and you just don't have that interaction with the people yeah, I mean, that is the toughest part. But it, it, it's also like, for for us personally, I think it's really cool that we've been able to get a record out during this time. Like, we had this record ready uh, for when we started touring this summer. And sure, the touring isn't happening, but just to have this record out and keep the band prevalent and keep the band pushing forward um, has been super important for us to do and it's been you know it, it, it's made it an exciting time oh, definitely. Um, to are, be a group right are you are you new with rope dope is this your first album with them this is our first album with rope dope yeah. uh, but you know we got seven studio records under our belt we've been going since 2003 is when we first kind of you know got into a jam room together and started playing so, uh, so yeah, it's been a long run, and it's been really exciting. And the Rope Dope team is awesome. And it's weird. Awesome. Funk is that, like, everyone loves funk. Everyone loves to listen to funk. But then you have stations that are funk stations, and they're only playing the oldies. And it's hard to get current artists who really has a great sound to get on them. So I'm kind of curious as to where do you fit in the ethos of getting out there? You're going into international markets, but... In American soil, I guess you're looking for like a, a 
triple A format, maybe a, a, a jazz radio station that, that may be putting on your tracks? Yeah, I mean, it's important for us to get on those Spotify playlists and, and to uh, get out. I mean, we do a lot of college radio as well. College radio is great for funk, but really like that's never been a focus of the band. You know, we've always just focused on touring and that's kind of been how we succeed and it, it, it's the best way for a funk band to succeed because everybody does love that music but not everybody listens to it all the time right if you're sitting at your house you may not turn to funk as one of your first things but if you go out and there's funk play you're gonna have an incredible time and so we've always just you know uh, pushed and pushed and pushed to be getting into these jazz festivals live music festivals um and 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 focusing less on on what say radio or streaming or our album sales are going to do because we're not we're not putting stuff out that's going to be extremely popular on the radio you know we're putting out music that that when we play live it makes people go bananas okay so when i'm listening to this album and kind of digging into it and in the early days when when rap had samples i would go okay they were sampling this they're sampling that but when it comes to this album, things sound familiar, but I can't understand if you're pulling from samples, are you looking at older funk artists to say, okay, we're going to take this drum pattern or we're going to take this horn stab. Uh, I went through the whole album with a notepad and the only thing that I got close to... I love to, that. That's great. I know, I know. I'm like, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm going to crack this code because... <laughs> um, I was like, I'm real good at it normally. And uh, uh, Uga has towards the end uh, uh it's a pattern of horn <laughs> and it either is uh gino sato's dancer or it's denise williams i got the next dance horn step other than that this whole album i am it's a wash of sound and i can't think of any other samples or like I, I know things sound familiar, but I can't say, oh, this is this or this is that. So help me with this. How do you guys like construct a song or is it just by feel or help me? That's actually, it, it's extremely exciting to hear you say that because, you know, I love that. And I, I think that's, uh, you know, one thing we've tried to get to do or wanted to do from the get go is to have a, a very unique sound, to kind of have a, a sound that's, that is our own which is hard to create these days. Um, so so when we uh, when we do write, we write in a methodical way, but also a very relaxed way. Like a lot of our horn lines, if you're trying to pinpoint our horn lines, our trumpet player, uh, Kent Wallace, does a lot of the main creation of our horn lines. I've written horn lines before. The other guitar players have written horn lines before. And uh, so even if there's the, the, the backbone of an idea there, uh, our trumpet player, Kent, who is a major jazz cat, he, he, he'll twist it and make it his own. And so so really, like, what we're trying to create is just always something that's exciting and vibrant to us. And we all come from, like, deep, different musical backgrounds. Like, even myself, when I was a young, young guy, I was a major, like, Primus head. I was a major Primus, Nirvana, like, rage against the machine guy. And then it wasn't until I was, you know, in you know, between the ages of, I don't know, 12 and 18 or something is when I really got into Latin and Afrobeat and, and funk music as well. I started listening to tons of Bootsy, you know, uh, tons of Tito Puente, all that stuff, right? And really expanding off that kind of grunge core. So I feel like what I bring to the band is kind of this hard rock edge. But then, you know, our, our trumpet player can't brings this he, he he came up in in jazz he was a major jazz player you know if something is making us all feel that energy then we we push forward with it and it doesn't necessarily have to sound like anything and i think that's the most exciting thing uh, about the band is is it doesn't you know we don't have to sound like funk even though we're called funk we you know just because we make a ska song doesn't mean we can't make a uh, halftime reggae song or something like that you know what i mean hmm. uh, so so there really is no uh, boundaries to what we do as a band where i think creatively that allows us to to do just break all the molds and have an extreme amount of fun when we're writing music 
Yeah, I noticed as your drumming style, there's no flourish really on uh, Mustafa. You are banging those uh, snares so hard that I'm sure after the song's over, the snares are like, what did I do to you? And those those are pretty ag- aggressive rock songs, but then you take the rest of the song and it kind of has this like ska ish feel to it, right? And they're they're like to me those are kind of light and breezy, but super aggressive at the same time, which is what I love. And I mean, anytime like I have a really hard time playing quiet, <laughs> and that's just that's just me, you know. That's just the way I am when I play the drums. I love. Uh, I love grooves that are in your face and, and, and really like um, hit you in the heart, right? And so so when you take a song like Mufasa or something like that, I mean, it's like, right? So it's like really aggressive. But at the same time, uh, you know, if, if you're in a club or you're at a festival and you're listening to it, it's extremely groovy and you can move to it. Freedom fighters and special forces riding horses in my airspace. And you got Bootsy on this album, so we got uh, We Play the Funk. How'd you get him on this album? Uh, that was our first track that we've ever done with Bootsy, and it, and and it was awesome. Uh, I mean, you know, it, we were coming out with, uh, and that's a remix of our song "Capital City." We turned it into "We Play the Funk," and and, and we were thinking of, you know, who is one of our favorite uh, inspires, our favorite artists collectively as a band, and we we thought of Bootsy. We said Bootsy is is the guy. He's got such an amazing um, way of of doing his lyrics and and just how he vocalizes things and how he says things is so incredibly creative um so so we wanted to team up with bootsy and and uh it literally just came down to to reaching out and talking and that's what's so nice about you know the world of music is it kind of you know it, it just transcends all borders we can be the most different people in the world uh but when there's music brought to the table you can you can get together and really enjoy the same thing so uh so we shot bootsy a message we said hey we have this we have this uh wicked foundation for a funk tune you know we introduced ourselves and we said we'd love to have you on the track like are you interested and uh and and he was interested right from the get-go, which was really exciting. And it was right when he was releasing Worldwide Funk, uh, his latest record. So, so it was really exciting to have Bootsy, you know, jump on board when he's putting out this new album, uh, and and uh, and and get him on board with Five Alarm because I mean to have uh, kind of one of the one of the, the the founding fathers of funk, right? And and Bootsy did it in a way that was so flashy and so exuberant uh which is which is very five alarm uh so to have him jump on board with us it, it was just such a nice treat like uh yeah the man is a legend and to be able to to work and co-write was was incredible so we shot him this this awesome foundation that we loved and he shot us back vocals and and you know we pushed back on forth on on uh, what should go where and etc and then i think we came out with a really pop and funk tune that that is super exciting to listen to
the album cover. You got three guys in uh, Mars or or on the moon. They're uh, on the moon, and, baby. What? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's it's a pretty cool looking uh, album cover, but is there a political statement attached to it? Uh, it's not as much a, a political statement as it is, a, you know, a statement of just the the situation that the world is in. I mean, we did a record, uh, "Abandon Earth," uh, a few years back. That was kind of a it was a it was a it was a nod to global warming, but it was based in this fantastical world where a psychotic ice cream man uh takes the band on a psychedelic journey through their minds and realizes that you know we are destroying the world with with what we do as human beings right so that was abandoned earth so we really wanted to play off that and um and the song big smoke uh, the actual song big smoke was written when there was just savage forest fires all across bc it was one summer uh it was so hot and the forest fire started and in March or something like that. So even even though they were roaring in the hills, like uh, hundreds of kilometers away from us, Vancouver was just blanketed in in smoke. Like you couldn't, you know, you didn't see the sky for all of August or something like that. It was just incredibly smoky and and uh, and so so it, it's it's a nod to kind of global warming and the and the way that the Earth is treated. And so this is kind of like the salvation of of these you know of these three astronauts they're kind of starting humanity over again on the moon and trying to do it in a way that maybe they see they could uh start a functioning society <laughs> thank you to uh, branston the band is called five alarm funk the album is called big smoke and it is on the rope dope records and it is out now absolutely man thank you so much for having me on and it, it's been a pleasure talking with you thomas Hi, it's Tom Gowker, and I am the host of Something Came From Baltimore. Something Came From Baltimore is a words and music podcast, and it has famous and future famous artists, artists like Sean Jones, Rupert Holmes, Auntie Hammy, Joey DeFrancesco, Go Go Penguin, Joey Alexander, Bucanti, Gerald Albright, Paula Cole, and Kat Edmondson. It's music that matters. It's music for your ears. Listen and subscribe to Something Came From Baltimore and be a part of that Be More music scene.